Yo, my peoples, what's up? My name is Jason, and I'm from the Shelf Stories YouTube channel, and I'm here in the Dice Tower today to review Not Alone Sanctuary. This is the latest expansion for Not Alone. Uh, the first expansion exploration added a bunch of cards. This one adds so much more. You get the more cards, but you get some player powers, and you get a whole new game mode. So I'm going to show you Sanctuary at the table and tell you what I think. So without further ado, let's go to the videotape. Welcome to a game of Not Alone Sanctuary. If you saw the last video that I made for Not Alone, the base game, or if you're familiar with the game, uh, you will know that this is a lot more stuff <laughs> that Sanctuary adds. This part is basically the same, but there's a lot of stuff that is added around it to complexify the experience. So you can think of what Sanctuary offers in two main buckets. The first bucket are powers, both for the explorer characters and for the hunter character. So you'll see over here, there are two cards, now a little space for the will tokens. They will represent uh, powers that you draw at the beginning of the game and you will have access to them. There are a lot of different potential powers and they can tend to be uh, uh, situational. So uh, example, you have Zaya Van Hill. When resisting, take back one extra place card for each spent will. Resisting is when you give up a will card to get some card back from the discard. She can get back one extra. Again, uh, gives you an example that it doesn't happen all the time, but when you do happen to have access to it, it's a nice power to have. Now we have the Hunter uh, Evolution powers. So they don't get any powers at the beginning of the game, but they will evolve them. Uh, over the course of the game, they are going to be acquiring DNA. And those DNA, you're going to be able to spend to get evolution cards. You can either get a minor one or a major one. And so a minor one are things like draw hunt cards up to a hand of four. Okay, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, you would spend that, that many DNA uh, tokens or a card like this, Cruel. The creature token inflicts the loss of one extra will. Nasty. <laughs> so uh, you know, either the character will like, kind of have a couple of these or they might build up to get some of the nastier evolutions. You can play as a variant just with the player powers, not with this extra board or extra stuff. And if you're just getting into the game, I kind of recommend that. It's a nice little addition to the game, the individual player powers and hunter power. So then we're going to get into the main event, so to speak, of this expansion, which is the Sanctuary module. So Sanctuary is actually a floating city. I missed it the first time, but now that I'm back on Artemia, uh, I have found the floating city. It begins on a random location, and every single turn, the Sanctuary token will move across the land, at least in the beginning, across the beginning five zones. Along with the Sanctuary, we're going to have access to Survivors. So there is an entire deck of survivors and we uh, every turn there's going to be two survivors that are available and getting these survivors are going to get some sort of benefit for us and eventually we'll be able to rescue them but know that they're up here. So on the explorer's turns, they now have a new option. They can go to an adjacent area that is adjacent to the current sanctuary. Obviously, as this moves, different areas will be adjacent. Once they're at a space, let's say it's at uh, number three and you decide to visit number four, you cannot do number four, choose to just, you know, no op the action and instead rescue a survivor. And so if I wanted to rescue Samantha Barros over here, uh, they would give me a benefit, which in this case would be one extra will. Uh, and there's other benefits that come out of the deck as well. I would be able to acquire them and not, again, not take the four action, but now I have a survivor. The other new option that you could do on your turn is you could actually visit the sanctuary. Now, normally you could just visit the sanctuary, same thing, you, you just ignore whatever is on the card and you do the alternate thing. Normally when you visit it, you can move this defense counter one space and you would, if there was an icon here, you would get the benefit. In this case, it would be take a card back from your discard. Or if you happen to have a survivor, you can uh, what they call fortify the sanctuary, uh, put the survivor back in the sanctuary, discard it, and then move the counter forward one extra space. Why is that important? Do you see this star? It is an alternative victory condition. I the the heroes can now win, well, the explorers anyway, not sure if the heroes. 
can now win in one of two ways. They can either move the rescue counter or they can move this defense of sanctuary counter all the way to the star. So that represents another way that the explorers can win the game. So as with any game of Not Alone, you are going to get additions to the decks as well, the Explorer Survival Deck and the Hunter Hunt Deck. So then uh, these cards, and I make a recommendation to not shuffle in every single card that you have of Not Alone, maybe shuffle this in with the base game card just so that you could see these cards more often because they do interact with the new elements. So Psychologist, I, of course I'm gonna show you Psychologist, that's what I am in real life. <laughs> If you rescue a survivor, regain up to three will. So obviously, you know, there are no survivors in the base game. So those cards don't have uh, anything that procs off survivors. So you're gonna wanna shuffle these in and, and make these prominent. Same thing with the hunt. Uh, generally, these are ways to draw new evolution cards or acquire more DNA. So DNA is the engine that is going to power the hunter character. They get one DNA at the end of the turn. They can also do what the game calls nesting, get three DNA, but it would advance this token. So it's kind of a, I really need to pay for an expensive one, <laughs> but at the cost of, you know, moving the defense token forward. So that is a lot of superstructure around basically the same game. The, the actions are basically the same, the phases are the same, and the movement of moving the rescue token or the defense token before the hunter moved the assimilation token, all of that is exactly the same. All right, so that was Not Alone Sanctuary at the Table, and I divide it, as I said in the overview, into two different buckets. So the player powers piece, and you can play with just the player powers and the alien power, just that. You don't have to play with the sanctuary model at all. So I'll talk about that one separately. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to play with it every time. Um, as I said in my original Not Alone review, which should be going live as I post the sanctuary review, I don't play Not Alone for the player powers. I don't play it. I don't play it for the gamer buttons. I'm glad they're there and they flavor up the core experience, which to me is that kind of head-to-head -head poker experience. Uh, and I don't really feel the player powers really add to that core experience. Matter of fact, they add a little bit of wrinkles of friction for me. Um, not every player power is awesome. Some of them, you know, you can kind of get a little benefit every turn. Some of them are really conditional. And, you know, when you get dealt that conditional card, I know you can care to take two and pick one, but when you end up with one, you may not know what you're getting, at least if you're a newer player to this. So it's like, eh, wah, wah. Uh, and I just, I don't know. Um, there were some times where it you needed the power to kind of like make something happen. Now it's pretty satisfying. So at least it does that, but did it do enough to justify the extra table space, the extra head space? You know, well, your mileage may vary. I thought the player powers on the aliens are a little bit more difficult because of the way the DNA works. So DNA, you have to build up that DNA uh, in order to uh, be able to play your cards. I just don't feel like you get enough, especially um, where certain cards can kind of take away DNA. So, you know, the alien player sitting on those, these cards and they might be struggling to actually, you know, make it happen. They could, you know, sacrifice a turn, get more DNA, but that would that that advances a counter to uh, bring the players closer to victory. So it's like, oh, you know, a, a little bit of a hard thing. And some of the alien cards just I don't I didn't weren't impressed by them at all. So like, um, you know, a level two card get the Art uh, Artima token, Artemia token. You might get the Artemia token anyway. It might be <laughs> later in the game anyway. So by the time you build up your 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 um, DNA you already got the power and you have this card and you can't mulligan. So you draw your card, you can't like mulligan into another card and getting, drawing cards cost you DNA. So there's just, I just feel like it's not, they, I guess what they were going for was, you know, giving the alien player some like extra things to do, things to manage, resource management style. Ugh. Again, it's not a resource management game. It's a head-to-head -head read your opponents game, and I felt like this it added a little bit too much for me. Is it? It, it works. Like, and I've had games where the the alien player you know makes it happen and they you know evolve, and that's cool. So if that again, your mileage may vary. That might be a fun thing. That little resource management piece might give you some more fun. Then there's the sanctuary model, and I 
the the peace that goes to the city that moves from place to place and also the survivors that need to be rescued and put into the sanctuary ah <laughs> that was really cool first of all i'm a thematic gamer and i saw it i saw survivors like the the city is floating and i see the survivors right next to the city going oh, where, where 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 what's going come on come back and then you know us as we rescuers we rescue the the survivor they give us a little bit of a thing which is a game benefit and then we put them into the the citadel shoring it up I could see it. It makes sense. I love when rules, when you introduce extra complexity and it's intuitive, it makes it easy to teach, makes it easy to remember, makes it uh, a little bit, you could flavor it up as you're playing. You know, I've definitely had times where I've kind of like, you know, played up for the table, how like, ooh, and now you've rescued the people. It's like, and that was um, just, I love when a game can do that. I love when a game can introduce something and it makes sense. And it's teachable and it's integratable and it really adds. And not only does it add to that uh, teaching part, it also adds another layer to that poker aspect. So now it's another thing to think about. Uh, the alien is looking at the players going, well, that person has a lot of survivors. They might make a break for the sanctuary this turn. Or that person um, doesn't have a lot of survivors. Maybe they're going to go to an adjacent space and I can catch somebody else along the way. Gives the alien something to think about and gives the player something to think about as well. Should I make a break for it? Uh, will the alien go after that person who's low on will so it leaves me free to go to the sanctuary? <laughs> That's what I want it, uh, out of a game of Not Alone, that reading of players. And it's, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. There's definitely a guessing element to this game. That's fine. The times where it does work out is very, very satisfying. You can't play with Sanctuary without the player power. So much of the player power is key off of what the Sanctuary module is doing. So... As much as maybe my preference would be to play with Sanctuary without the player powers, can't really do it, and that's fine. I said a lot about the player powers, and they're, again, they're not bad. I think if you, that's the kind of thing that you want to introduce in your game, that's cool. I didn't need it, but the fact that they're there and it does integrate well with this Sanctuary module, which I think is really fun, makes this expansion a winner. So we are going to go 8.5 on this expansion seal of excellence. Sanctuary is awesome. Will it be for everybody? No. If you want that just core, simple, um, you know, basic poker experience, then, you know, this game adds. It just, it does, it just adds, 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 and people might not like that. It also does not add, add the cooperation that you might want, that some players might want in this game. It's just like, you know, more, more, more connoisseurs expansion if you will i'm a connoisseur i love not alone i played it a ton i wanted to play something different and this one delivers so i really really enjoyed sanctuary the second expansion for not alone if you like what you heard please visit me at my channel Shelf Stories. Shelf Stories is where I talk about uh, cooperative games and one versus many games and get into all sorts of conversations. I also have uh, playthroughs in the One Stop Co-op Shop, uh, another a channel that's specifically focused on cooperative games. Please go check us out there as well. This is Jason reminding you, if you change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, lay everybody.